Dan Goldman is a Democratic representative from New York City. And today, during a committee hearing on the Biden border failures, Goldman slammed Donald Trump and Republicans for not only killing a conservative border security deal, but then turning around and campaigning on the problems that that deal would have addressed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got a lot to get through because we've got about four years to walk through. Um, that chart, of course, mischaracterizes when Mr. Trump took uh, left office. Um, but there's no question that the problems at our border have significantly increased over the last several years. Um, we can debate the cause of that, and we have debated the cause of that. Uh, there's unquestionably a lot more climate migration. There's unquestionably a lot more authoritarianism in Central and South America that is leading to uh, political persecution and uh, to people wanting to flee. Um, but there's a problem. And what happened is the administration began to address that problem uh, as it was increasing. But Republican attorneys general all around the country filed lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit to stop administrative action. So in response to that, the Biden-Harris administration went to Congress to say, Let's work on bipartisan legislation to try to solve our border crisis. And Senator Lankford, the, our, the second most conservative uh, Republican in the Senate, negotiated for months with an independent and a Democrat and with the administration to come to some sort of bipartisan resolution, which they did miraculously because this has notoriously been a very difficult issue. Now, that deal was the most uh, conservative border security immigration bill that's ever been agreed to by any Democratic administration. Um, it had a number of different provisions, but I think most importantly, uh, would have dramatically streamlined the asylum process. And let me just say something about the asylum process, because there's a lot of talk about legal immigration and illegal immigration. Asylum is legal immigration. It is not illegal immigration. It is part of our laws that you may seek asylum under certain circumstances. The problem we have at the border and the problem we have with our asylum process is that only 20 to 25% of people who apply for asylum ultimately get asylum. But it takes seven to 10 years for that process to play out. This border security bill would have dramatically shortened the asylum process such that it would be over in six months. And the incentive for someone who knows that they do not qualify for asylum to come across the border would be eliminated. And many of those 75 to 80% of people who are not eligible for asylum would not come here and would not be granted work permits. The other thing it does is it would increase visas because we do have a work shortage. We have a job sh uh, shortage for agriculture, for construction, for restaurant workers, hotel workers, home care, nurses, doctors, scientists. This is all what I hear in my district. We need to increase those quotas. That bill would have done it. We need, as Mr. Heike said, to increase personnel at the border to deal with the problems so that we can address the women who are being raped, so we can address the cartels that are fueled by American-made guns. We need more personnel. We need more resources. This bill would have done it. But what happened? Donald Trump killed the deal. He's open about it. And you know why he killed the deal that would have dramatically solved our problems at the border? Because he cares more about his own election than he does about the problems facing the American people. And he wanted chaos at the border so that he could run on it. And when you watch him at the debate, 
he answers every single question. It doesn't matter what the topic is by going back to immigration. That's what he wants to do. I want to put up, finally, this, this last quote here from James Lankford, who was the author of this bill and was understandably very frustrated that it did not pass. It is a very, very clear that the Republicans do not want to solve the problem at the border. And so what has happened since Donald Trump killed this bill that would have dramatically addressed the solutions at the border? President Biden and, and Vice President Harris have had no choice but to implement executive actions to streamline this process so that people coming in have to come in through ports of entry. So that those 73,000 people who are stopped at the border, they're not getting in, they're stopped at the border, have to go through the points of entry so that we can vet them and check them for their criminal history. And that has reduced border crossings to a level not seen since 2019. More than 55%. But that's not the solution. The solution is legislation, and the Republicans will not meet in the middle. I yield back. Dan Goldman there talking about the rise of authoritarianism and the increase in immigrants that that is causing. And I wonder if there's someone who maybe is running for president or who uh, was the president in America. I wonder if their maybe fascist kind of authoritarian rhetoric has helped with the increase in authoritarianism in some of these countries. Um, hmm. Wonder if that would have helped. Um, Dan Goldman also there having to explain what asylum is to Republicans and the fact that people seeking asylum isn't actually illegal, of course, because Republicans don't really understand the law and don't really care to address the problems at the border. They want to campaign and run on those problems to help them politically. One of the biggest attacks on Kamala Harris is that she hasn't done anything with her with her borders are position, which she wasn't ever the borders are. She was tasked with helping to reduce the number of migrants crossing the border. And that conservative border deal would have de-incentivized people from seeking asylum falsely. But no, 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 Republicans don't want to do that as Dan Goldman pointed out. He also talked about the job shortage and the fact that that border deal would have increased the quota in uh, parts of the country so that migrants could have been brought in legally to help fill jobs that are desperately needed. That reminds me of what's happening in Springfield, Ohio. Those Haitian immigrants, 16,000 immigrants were brought in to fill jobs there and what does Trump and the Republican Party do? They demonize them and they lie about them eating cats and dogs, which then ultimately leads to bomb threats in schools, hospitals, and government buildings. Because the Republican Party and Donald Trump are not serious people, they're dangerous people. It would have also, that border deal would have also increased border security by increasing the personnel at the border something that Republicans love to dwell on. Oh, we don't have nearly enough resources at the border. Yeah, okay, so Democrats are willing to cross the aisle and sign a bipartisan conservative deal. Republicans are nowhere to be found. Actually, we know exactly where they are. They're at Mar-a-Lago hanging out with Donald Trump who wanted them to kill the bill so that he could use it to run for the presidency. And it goes back to Dan Goldman talking about how Trump at the debate answered every question with illegal immigration, the border problems, the open border, which is a complete and bogus lie. Not only is Donald Trump doing that, but Republicans are holding hearings about the failures of the Biden administration at the border, despite letting a border security deal die because they need to be holding these hearings and they need these political points. It's crazy how desperate and uh, just disgusting Trump and Republicans are willing to <laughs> complain about the open border and then given the opportunity on a silver platter to fix the problem, they turn around, they refuse to, 
because they want to score political points. That's where Donald Trump is. That's where the Republican Party is. And it is disgusting. But let me know what your thoughts are on Dan Golden's speech in the comments below. Be sure to like and share this video so that you can bring your friends into the fold and subscribe to Reflect if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. My name is Brendan Plank. See you in the next video.